My dear wife, as the ancient saying goes, in wine is truth. In sincerity, the mark of a drunkard. If you could or would, for one brief moment, shut that vast, resounding chasm of a mouth, I oh, should be what grateful, you madam. What care you for the deprivations I have suffered in the name of marriage? Oh, mariage de con bonans, oh, cando, guile, oh, mockery. Oh, mockery. shut up. Oh, how can you insult me so? Very easily, madam. I have but to listen to your fatuous brain. Do you hear his churlish insult, father? Father! Huh? What? what? Sugar? Yes. Oh, there you are. What if it possessed me to marry you? That is a question I often inquire of myself, madam, to which there is no satisfactory answer save one, perhaps, and that is that no one else would have you. Only a man who drinks could talk like that. We escape the unendurable however we can. How I despise you. <coughs> have you Poor no sense abused of bad, sir? Really. You never cared a fig for me. You only courted me to gain control of father's business. What other reason could there be? Oh, did you hear that? Does he ever? Father! Huh? What? Uh, I gave the sugar to you once. There. Shall I give him some medicine? Hmm? <laughs> oh. Hmm. Pretty close. Merely for purposes of enlightenment, Mr. Trumbull, I could have been the greatest opera singer in the world. What world? If the vocal emissions of a laryngitic crow be qualifications, yes, then perhaps you could have been. What know you of art and beauty, toss pot, soap, inebriate? Your mouth, madam. Shut it! <laughs> Anybody could be proud to rest in this coffin. <laughs> you can't even keep our heads above water. Why? You've only had one customer in the past nine months. My father had a thriving undertaking business until you proceeded to get a hold of it and run it into the ground. Where else? <laughs> a thriving business. The receipts of which he used to cram this house with monstrosities. If my father chose to spend his hard-earned profits on the collection of curious objects, that he was his... He did more than collect it? curious objects, madam. He also fathered one. I despise you! <gasps> Demon rum will get you yet! I look forward to that day with keen anticipation, madam. <laughs> But I wouldn't do to get her down here as a customer. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Trumbull. Trumbull! Will you learn to pronounce my name correctly? I said Mr. Trumbull. What in the name of all that's holy is that thing? This? This is the new coffin. I don't like to see anybody buried naked. I don't... I just don't know. No one in their right mind would be caught dead in that thing. My coffin. How gratifying, Mr. Gilly, to have a, a master craftsman in one's employ. Well, I'm going out and drink myself into a state of stupefaction. Mr. Trumbull? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Black? How nice to see you, sir. <laughs> that remains to be seen, sir. Um, now, if you'll excuse me, I have a singularly pressing... A boon, to... sir. A trifling matter of a year's rent in arrears. Has it been a year? Each and every unpaid day of it. Well, what do you know about that? And well, much I... as I regret to dun, dear sir, it is unhappily incumbent upon me, as owner of these premises, to regard your monetary dereliction as, uh, shall we say, uh, inconvenient to my purposes? Oh, well, now I... So vastly inconvenient, uh, one might add, that should the debt remain outstanding for as much as 24 hours more, I fear that um, legal machinery must, for force, be set in motion, and Messrs. Hinchley and Trumbull face the incommodious prospect of taking up a residence in the street. In the street? Have I expressed myself with clarity, Mr. Trumbull? With extreme clarity, Mr. Blackout. Then we are of one mind. Mm -hmm. Our mutual interests in accord. 
24 hours, Mr. Trumbull. Mm. 24 Good day hours. to you, sir. Good day to you, you penny-pinching old pig. Mr. Trumbull. And as for you, you sniveling... Oh. 